Here we are again with this part five masquerade knit and Craig have spent a night in Bangkok. Nice evening, out and about, some food, ended up at Swam Lum Night Plaza. Listen to some music. Morning comes and Craig wakes up to the sound of Knit in the bathroom uh, throwing up. She's not well. Something she's eaten the night before, maybe some street food or something, but unusual for a Thai girl to be ill with food. But there it is. She's uh, not well at all. Um, it gets up off us to any you know help or anything. She's no. She says she's going back to bed. Uh, for him to go off, off down and have breakfast on his own, so he does. You know, he's from Ireland, he likes his breakfast. Down he goes, breakfast is included in the package with that hotel. Reasonable breakfast. Hotel's not that busy, not that many people stay in there. Anyway, it's his breakfast. Back up to the room and she's fast asleep. He can't go out and leave her really. What does he do? So he thinks he'll, it's probably about 9.30. You just go to the swimming pool. This hotel, there's a pool lower level and a pool at a higher level, which nice sun trap. And there's a couple of guys there that serve you beer and cold drinks from the fridge. I think there's a pool table there as well, or a snooker table undercover, from my memory, if it serves me right. She's fast asleep, so he puts her swimming costume on the bed next to her. Uh, so that sort of gives her a clue where he's gone and he grabs a towel puts his shorts on and a t-shirt and one wanders up to the pool locks the door so she's uh, fast asleep gets up to the pool there's just one other lady there at the side of the pool and the two guys are there and he walks in and he orders a beer and they've got those plastic um, uh, chairs, uh, some beds, with the back reclines up and down. Anyway, he grabs one of those. It's not a huge pool, but it's uh, still a nice pool. The sun's there. It's a bit of shade at one end, but he's quite happy in the sun. Needs a bit of a suntan. And uh, relaxes, jumps in the chair, and his beer comes over. Lovely ice cold beer in a chilled glass. Almost perfection. Anyway, has a bit of, drinks half his beer and then thinks I'll have a swim. Jumps in the pool and is swimming around for a bit. And uh, then as he's leaning against the side, thinking of what's going on in life and sort of daydreaming, he looks across to this other person uh, at the pool. This other person, he hadn't really noticed when he came in, but Stunning, beautiful Thai woman. She was on one of these uh, sunbeds with a back pretty vertical, and um, she had her lower part of her body covered over with a towel. And she had an iPad or some sort of tablet she was watching um, something on. Beautiful long hair, however, she had a bandage over her nose and what looked like a bandage around her neck. Um, and she had a sort of floppy small hat on uh, to keep the sun off her face. And he looked across and she looked at him and smiled and he put his hand up and waved and said hello. She's only about three meters from him, four meters. Hello, how are you? And she pointed to her throat as if to say, I can't talk. So he's assuming that she's had some form of operation, maybe tonsillitis or, or I don't know, no idea, he had no idea. He just 
and the nose may be something to do with you know nose operation or something anyway he didn't know but he saw the bandages but he he's looking at her she was stunning she looked like she had a one-piece black swimming costume on but couldn't tell because the towel was over her legs um, and she had a drink there it looked like a, a cocktail but something about her I mean she was stunning if he was to guess what she was um, he would say she was an actress or a model. She was that pretty. Uh, just, just the, she, she was pale skinned. The look about her, she just, she wasn't the normal looking Thai girl. Um, very hard to describe, but even though bandage on the nose and, and throat, uh, absolutely stunning. Anyway, he said hi and she sort of pointed to that and, and he's like, oh, okay. And uh, normal reaction. Her drink was almost empty. He said, "Would you like another drink?" And she sort of put her head to one side and looked at him and smiled and went and nodded yes up and down. So he pulled himself out of the pool, um, put his finger up to the guys, hand up to the guys, said, "Get another drink for the girl and uh, get me another beer." And at this point he grabbed his beer and there's some chairs lying around and he pulled the chair closer over towards this lady and he f necked his beer down there's some tables lying around and sort of sat close to her as if to start a conversation but she can't talk and she was sort of a little bit taken back but she was okay along came the waiter with another whatever it was cocktail for her and a beer for him pours his beer um, and he tries to strike up a conversation <laughs> with this lady and in a minute I'm gonna kill that rooster <laughs> two roosters oh we've got a new one okay and he's gonna strike a conversation but she can't talk so it's sort of sign language and he's you know he said great to meet you my name's Craig and the girl just shrugged her shoulders and again pointed and he said oh, okay you can't talk um, and he's like are you Thai as in from Thailand and she nodded yes and he said you had operations and she's just like yeah and, and he's like hmm and he's awkward then but he's he's like She's stunning. She just he keeps looking at her face, even though there's this plaster on her nose. Absolutely stunning. But it felt a bit awkward, so he's like, "I'll leave you to rest because you're obviously with the operation." And she seems to understand his English, and he, he he thinks, "Oh, she's understanding me." So he's like, "I'll leave you alone. Enjoy the drink." And he gets up, puts his chair back, and goes and sits back at his sunbed. Um, and uh, every time I come to make a video, one of the cats decides to come out and either annoy me with it. It's in a tripod. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so he sits back down on his on his chair, and uh, oh, that's oh, you're heavy. Let me just look how fat Kirby is, guys. Now, yeah huge all right leave my tripod alone go away he sits back but he still keeps from the corner of his eye looking at um, these at this girl and he's amazed he's just like there's something about her but his missus is back in the room sick anyway he lies back down 10 15 minutes goes by and this girl gets up. She very coy the way she, she turns away, wraps the towel around herself and folds it in. She puts her iPad or whatever away, pulls out her handbag, and you can see her writing something. And um, she came across to him and she gave him a bit of paper and on it it says room 
uh, let's just make a number up, 1270, um, gave it to him, smiled and waved at him, close by, you know, gets her stuff and walks off. And away she goes. Why would a girl just come up to you and give you a bit of paper with a room number on? Complete stranger. Is that an invitation? Craig's there scratching his head thinking, what should I do? Does, does she want me to go to her room or what? And he, he does, he sits there and, ah, uh, oh, Tigger, what are you? Sits there and uh, scratches his head. Anyway, he puts his beer down and he drinks it. Sorry, he, he drinks his beer, puts the glass, empty glass down. And he thinks, I will go and check on the missus. And he goes back to his room. They put his beer on a tab, so key number and all the rest of it. Goes back to his room, goes in. Missus still fast asleep. So he, he picks her swimsuit up, put it back in the bag, he gets a quick shower, changes, puts some shorts and the shirt on. He thinks, now what? She's fast asleep still. I've had food. Room number 1270. He's intrigued. She was stunning. Something in him is saying, go on, go to the room. Would you go to that room? So he does. Locks the door, off he goes. No, no note for knit. Now he's in the older part of the hotel. This this old hotel, I don't think it's there anymore, but it had two like towers. So he, he's in the old section. He goes down in the lift to, to the bottom, walks along a corridor past some shops, round the corner to reception, and then over to some other lifts at the back which take you to the newer section. And that's where 1270 was. Gets in the lift, 12th floor, we guess it's a 12th floor. Goes around, stood outside room 1270. His heart's pounding. He doesn't know what to expect, you know? Has she got, is she gonna write loads of information or is she gonna start talking? What? Knocks on the door. She opens the door. She stood there in a white dressing gown. Done up. Smiles at him, puts her hand out to get his hand and pulls him into the room. Closes the door behind him. Now this isn't an X-rated love story video, so I'm not gonna elaborate. Let's just fast forward two and a half hours. Craig comes out of the room He's now got a phone number of this lady on a bit of paper. And I need to figure out a name for this lady. But we'll come up with a name on the next episode. Two and a half hours, it comes out, he's got a phone number. He's got a huge smile on his face and he sort of leaps and bounds and skips back to his own room. He's just had two and a half hours, should we say, aerobics, pleasure, and in his words, the best time of his life. He gets back to his room, opens the door, and Knit is sat there on the bed, fully dressed, with her bag packed. And she starts shouting at Craig and given him grief for not being sat there watching over her, looking after her when she's ill. 
I think she's actually been on the phone to other people and she's about to shoot off to another guy with more money again. But that's just me thinking. She's shouting at him. Craig turns round to her and says a few swear words and then announces he's just had sex, the best sex in his life for two and a half hours with not a rooster, a lady boy. We'll leave it there. Catch you on the next one. Hmm. Nice twist. <laughs>